Welcome everybody. We are back with our show. Let's talk about evening. We have something something special. Well, I say every evening is special, but obviously this evening is super special. Um, uh, we're really excited to be talking about Culture Shock this evening. I'm here on this show with Phil and Jasmine, which I'm going to introduce in a second. Um, I'm Lily. I'm working for Friends International. I'm the team leader here, but I also work on campus. I'm the international chaplain on campus, so do say hi um, if you're in the hive in the future. But as I said, this evening we're going to be talking about Culture Shock. And we thought it might be really helpful for you guys um, if you've recently moved to the UK to think a little about through that, what it means. Um, we're going to be looking at the different faces of culture shock as well. And we're going to just share a little bit of our own experience, what it looked like. Because I, I remember back in, in my days when I moved from Germany to the UK about seven years ago, I remember how tired I was those first few months just trying to translate all the time. And I particularly remember one incident when I was sitting on a sofa with my flatmates. We were watching something, probably the Bake Off. That's a quite quite little neat neat spoiler there or a little prop for tomorrow. Join us and watch the Bake Off. But I remember sitting on the couch with my flatmate. We were watching the Bake Off and I was just chatting um, on my phone with someone from Germany. And I was turning to my housemate, chatting to him, and he's just looking at me it's like, well, what are you talking about? And then I repeated it again. I said something to him and then I realized I was speaking German of him, but he was English. So he didn't have a clue what was going on. He was so confused and I was confused as well. So that's what we're going to be talking about, confusion and culture shock. And I'm here, as I said, with Phil and Jasmine. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Good evening. Uh, Phil nice is you. working for Friends International as well, as well as Jasmine. Phil can share a little bit more about himself. But we're going to um, mm. go to Jasmine first. Sorry, Phil. You're going to get it on. That's good. <laughs> because Jasmine is kind of in the middle of it all, in the middle of a culture shock. And um, yeah, Jasmine, where are you from? How long have you been in the UK? And how are you doing? Yeah, well, hello everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Jasmine. I come from the state of Oregon in the United States. Um, and I've been here for about three or four weeks now. Um, so I'm still pretty new. <laughs> um, and I've just been enjoying trying to be here and navigate, but there's been lots of um, shocking things that I wasn't quite prepared for um, as I've moved here. So excited. <laughs> Do you already have a really funny story or so you could share with us at the beginning or a, a weird culture shock moment for you? Yeah, I think <laughs> there was one moment um, where I, I think just a general theme is I'm never expecting the language to be quite as different as it is. And so um, I remember people talking about these trolleys and trolley coins, and I'm just sitting there thinking, like, what does that even mean? Because in the U.S., we have grocery carts, which are trolleys here, um, and we don't put coins in them to get them out or <laughs> do anything. And so that was one thing I was like, oh, OK. I don't know what that is, but I'm learning. <laughs> yes, we do love our trolleys and the trolley coins specifically. You get them in all sorts of um, yeah, branded ways. Um, and we have Friends International branded trolley coins as well. We do. So if you don't have yours yet, get in touch. We'd love to give you yours. Phil, tell yeah. us a little bit more about yourself. Where are you from? Um, and your favorite culture shock story that doesn't give anything away of what is coming in the next half an hour yeah um i think that's actually a culture shock question in itself asking someone potentially uh the background that i have where are you from is actually quite a difficult question uh less so now than it was when i started uni a few years back um but i grew up in Papua new guinea spent from when i was six to 17 uh, over there. Um, before that, I'd spent some time in Australia and a little bit of time in America um, and actually spent, by the time I was 11, spent more time out of England than in it, though I was born in uh, Frimley Park Hospital, which is just down the road <laughs> from, from Guildford. Um, so I've grown up traveling a bit, then spent 11 years in Papua New Guinea and then came back to the UK for university. 
and uh, that's where I experienced culture shock, though it possibly was a bit more like reverse culture shock. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that this evening, but mainly it's about um, the initial culture shock of engaging with a culture that's not your own for the first time. And I kind of think that applies to me when I came back to university. Um, I had to learn how to be British. Um, I had a bit of an Australian accent, which comes out when I talk to Australians, and I don't mean to mock them, but occasionally I, I drop in accent uh, like water, and um, it just it, it, it happens. And um, so I think some of the hardest bits of confusion are when you have, um, where are you from? Uh, for someone who's grown up in multiple countries, that was quite a hard and confusing question at times. Uh, where's home? People are just asking you where where home is and, and thinking that's a fairly neutral question. Um, so that there's there's things like that that you just like um, take you a little bit by surprise sometimes. Um, I'm sure I'll share a few more stories as we go um, in a moment. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Is you still say water sometimes? Water when yeah, you're not does, talking it, to Australians. <laughs> There are some other times where um, I, I got uh, a little bit embarrassed when I was talking to a girl about her pants. <laughs> um, and, yeah, that was from growing up and around Americans. Obviously, that's not really <laughs> offensive or weird, um, but she did. I did get a very strange look. At, at, um, I can't even remember why I was talking about her trousers at the time, but there was, there was something, some reason that wasn't creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so the, the and sidewalk as well that, so mm. yeah interpreting trolley was quite uh I, i'm ready to do that americanisms i'm, I'm okay with <laughs> brilliant I, I know as as we were talking um about this evening and what we'd um just the content i know jasmine you said something that actually really helped me to understand culture shock a little bit more um would you be up just for sharing that with us and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the different stages of culture shock and phil is going to take us through that if that's all right totally yep. yes i'm so happy to share yeah so i was i've been reading this book and there's a specific thing that really stuck out that helped me understand what I'm experiencing with culture shock and gave me some language um, and helped me feel less alone as I'm experiencing these differences. And so I'll just read a little bit um, to you all. And so um, here we go. So it says, think for a moment about what gives you a sense of achievement. A significant part of the problem is that when we first enter a new culture, all the normal things from which we gain a sense of worth, success, achievement, and competence are stripped away. So there are a few like examples of this. The first one is you'll feel incompetent to manage ordinary life. Where do you buy glue? What do you say at, the, at a roadblock? How do you get your washing machine mended? The next one is you'll be unable to communicate because of your lack of language ability. This is when I wasn't <laughs> um, expecting as much. The next one is you'll be able to relate because of your lack of cultural understanding or you'll be unable, unable to relate because of your lack of cultural understanding. And the last one is you'll not achieve much because your work life is on hold for language learning. So this is less uh, um, one that I resonate with, but might resonate with some of you and that's totally normal and okay. Um, and so this just, just makes me ask the question, what is my identity in? That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and that question is so important for recognizing that your identity might be changing uh, mm -hmm. through this time and the confusion that that brings so it's a really good quote to get us started shall i go into the the state yeah. that's quite an, a nice um transition so uh i'm sharing my screen for the first time through Streamyard. so we'll see hopefully that this works and i, I share the right thing uh with you but um this is a, a helpful graphic um <laughs> that we've used in Friends International um, quite a bit, but I found that it's uh, been done by InterVarsity, which I believe is an American organization that does similar things to us. Um, but you can see on there that it's quite a, um, there's two parts to it. One is first interacting with uh, the, the foreign culture, where if you're coming into UK for the first time, we're the foreign culture. Um, but there's also the second half of it, which is when you return home, 
And that's what I meant by reverse culture shock. So we do uh, seminars on reverse culture shock and preparing to return home well. Um, but it does translate quite a bit, some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. Um, so in there, you've got um, when you arrive, there's this fun moment, this excitement, this new thing to experience. And uh, that's kind of uh, what you might be feeling right now, although I imagine that some of it is very different uh, in COVID times, <laughs> having to do this uh the fun might might be coming soon you might actually have jumped straight into flight uh, or even fight uh, at the moment so the the graphic is a straight line but don't make that um that might not be necessarily how it works for you and actually i found my transition from papua new guinea to uh the uk was actually a bit more like a squiggly circle loop the loop type thing um and carried on over about two years you you think you're fit and then suddenly something else comes up that you haven't interacted with. It's a new thing. It's a new culture, uh, a new TV show that someone references and you have no idea what they're talking about. Um, and it's old to them, new to you. And suddenly you've got to go through this whole thing again and uh, it can get really confusing momentarily. And, and that confusion could be just a short moment of our oh, miss wherever it is you're from. It might be a more prolonged confusion, maybe a bit of embarrassment. So the emotions can range. They can range to just, oh, that's a bit annoying, to actually I'm really angry and I, I want to uh, run away or this is ridiculous. What are these British people like? Um, I'm sure we're, we've all been like there <laughs> if, you, if you've been outside of the UK. And in any other culture, there's always something that potentially might wind you up. And by wind you up, that's a British phrase for getting annoyed. So that's kind of what we'll be talking about through uh, this the next sort of 20 minutes or so. Um, Jasper, I'll be really interested to know if it, you, you had to go into 14 days in a home, <laughs> a local home. You know Guildford's just there, but you're not able to explore it. Did you experience a honeymoon <laughs> fun period uh in those 14 days yeah that's a great question i feel like it was hard for it to be in that honeymoon period but i still feel like there was a sense of oh i'm so excited to be here and this is new and so i definitely felt some of it but it definitely was difficult because i wasn't able to go out and really mm -hmm. talk to people um or even it prolonged me getting acquainted with the area um so but luckily it meant that I got to learn some of the words that, <laughs> you know, in, instead of being just thrown into it where I didn't know the language, I got to kind of hear it from conversations, mm -hmm. which helped yeah. when I went out, out of quarantine. Would you, would you, do you think you, you are in the honeymoon phase right now in the, oh, this is all fun. I'm finally out. I get to experience <laughs> it all. Yeah, I think more so now than when I first got here. <laughs> yeah, I can, yeah, I can imagine that. Um, so the, the fun bit, L Lily, what, what was it like for you? Cause mm. you obviously arrived from Germany. We haven't actually talked about your <laughs> experience yeah, though. I'm it's fine. probably been shared on, on other videos, but yeah, probably. coming over from, from Germany, mm. well, how long ago, a few years back? Seven, seven years ago. But I, I think for me, it was very, not very different, slightly different to, to Chasman's experience as a, I was plucked into a course. I wasn't in isolation. It wasn't in COVID times. And in that course, it was just a few of us. So I think it was six of us or seven of us. So in that sense, we were quite a, a close community. Um, and outside of those six, seven people, there were a few more that really helped me to settle. And it was people I was seeing every day. Some of them I was living with, I was working with them. Um, and that actually really helped me to settle down fairly quickly because those people became my friends. I got on with them really well. I guess it would have been tricky if I didn't like them, <laughs> but fortunately that didn't happen, but we got on really well. We were all there for the same purpose. Um, I did some, some work specific training with them. Um, and they were, we were all similar age as well. So that made it a lot more easier um, to settle in and to have that fun, fun time. And I really, really enjoyed that, that first initial period. Um, yeah, just discovering British culture, trying out 
uh, going traveling around in the local area as well i really enjoy that yeah mm -hmm. So yeah, I think similar for for me, there was nice. there was an excitement. I was ready for uni, and there is that. In some ways, when you arrive at university, everyone's in the same boat. Yeah, um, everyone's in a new place, trying to find out who they are away from their parents, trying to cook for themselves, uh, trying to figure out how to use um, kitchen utensils they might not have <laughs> used before uh washing machines all that yeah. sort of thing so everyone's going through some form of culture shock but mm. having the added layer of language i i didn't experience that which is fortunate yeah. although there were some things that were different um that i said mentioned before about accent and and embarrassing myself but for the most part that wasn't as tiring as many people will have yeah. felt yeah um I didn't have to translate lectures and, and all that sort of thing. Um, and, but yeah, there's, there's still a, a general tiredness that might mm. start to come about. And, and that's where we start to go into the flight stage. And uh, just to read from, so we've, we've got this resource that's called Returning Home. And uh, it's got a whole uh, load of things to, to help uh, process returning home, but also applies to this stage. And it says, it's when the initial pleasure and excitement has faded and you are faced with the daily demands of work and life back home. Uh, sorry, life now here, trying to work out what's at home. So you've, you've suddenly got all your lectures, you've got your full timetable. Some of it now is online. So you're probably wrestling with that while also with your bubble, working out these confusing rules um, that, everyone is trying to work out at the moment and probably starting to miss home and uh, mm. you may begin wishing for your uh, your life back home and be disappointed that this situation isn't what you dreamed it to be and and I think that is the case for most people arriving at university your expectations of what university will be like are totally sort of blown out the water and and, and that's kind of what will um it will actually shape your identity quite significantly that learning to be resilient when mm -hmm. your expectations are are actually uh, unfortunately and, and quite sadly not what you you hoped for and so i believe a lot of good can come from that though you're probably not feeling it at the moment but this is the flight stage if that's where you're at and it might be actually some people thrive in this sort of scenario and actually you're finding it kind of fun not everyone does. And so you might be in this stage where you're just tired, you're struggling with all the Zoom calls, trying to wrestle with the, gu the, the guidance. And um, in, in many ways, my transition into the UK life will be very different to, to what you've, you've had. I've got a couple of experiences of flight um, in my mind. They're a little bit odd. But before I share uh, anything, um, Jas Jasmine, have you, have you experienced that in, at all? Uh, yourself the sort of flight moment and is there anything you, that you can sort of speak into on that yeah I think the biggest thing for me is I just get really I'm exhausted by the end of the day I think my brain is working a lot trying to sort out the differences as well as work and staring at a screen um, all the time for for meetings and um, talking with people and so I definitely feel quite tired by the end of the day and it's just something I'm like okay I have to push through and I'm sure I'll feel more of it. I've I've only been out of isolation since Wednesday. So this has only been not even a week yet. Um, so I'm sure I'll feel more of it as I press on. Yeah, yeah. L Lily, what kind of experience of the, the flight stage did you, uh, did you experience? Have, I mean, there are occasions where I'm still fairly nostalgic about <laughs> <laughs> life back in Papua New Guinea yeah. uh, the decade on, but like what, what kind of um, experiences have you had of, of flight? I think one of the biggest one was missing my friends and kind of feeling like you're missing out on the things that they are getting up to and you see pictures of, of them on social media and the things like, oh, I, I would have been there now with them if I'd be back home as well. So I think that was a big one and seeing big changes in their lives, not being able to be around for that one, not being able to help them through that one was a massive challenge for me. Um, and I got to this point as well. I, I remember a few months in, I got really annoyed with people thinking I'm really nice all the time. <laughs> and then not knowing me when I'm really crumpy, really tired 
tired. Um, that has changed, by the way. People know me like that now. Um, but I, I was just really, I was really missing my friends and my best mm -hmm. friends who had known me for years and years. Some of them I had lived with as well, and they, they know me and they know when I'm really grumpy, when I'm super annoyed with things. And I've really missed having friends around that knew me um as mm. as the whole lily um with all the ups and downs and i just thought oh i'm not always nice because mm. somebody had <laughs> to see that um so i got a bit tired of people complimenting me or was like oh it's so lovely um uh, it's like no i'm i'm really crumpy as well um so yeah that that was definitely a big part of 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 that flight stage wishing i would be with my friends feeling like i'm missing out at home as well mm. Um, and I'm feeling like they didn't, they they don't really know me here, which was fair enough because they had only known me for a week or so, or a few weeks or a few months. So yeah, that was a big one. Yeah, that's, that's really helpful. Uh, my, mine's a bit of a, a potentially silly one, but it, it just stuck in my memory. Um, and it's so in, in Papua New Guinea, the supermarkets don't have half as much choice as we have. In the in this in the supermarkets here, and so I walked into a Tesco's so down the road from where uh, I was living at the time, and um, went to get a tube of toothpaste, and I just felt this really odd confusion <laughs> that I couldn't choose. The none of them seemed to look like the toothpaste I knew. I mean, we had Colgate in Papua New Guinea, but we didn't seem to have. <laughs> I didn't realise there were fifty different types of Col Colgate toothpaste. And um, and I, it was just a moment of I wouldn't say panic, but embarrassment of why is this such a hard decision to make? Mm -hmm. um, eventually making it and leaving the shop, and no one would have been necessarily any the wiser. But it was just a sort of internal wrestling of I have no idea why I'm finding it so hard to buy a tube of toothpaste, mm -hmm. but I am. And yeah. um, and and so you you do have to wrestle with that, and you have to. Again, it's that resilience of pushing through that because avoiding it doesn't necessarily help and it doesn't help you get used to uh, going to the supermarket, for example, or, or whatever it is you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you face uh, a more difficult time of confusion, I mean, that was a tube of toothpaste. I could just grab anyone, even if it tasted disgusting, it would still clean my teeth. But if you have a more uh, serious time of confusion where you're just not able to make decisions, there are plenty of resources out there to to help and we're, we're one we'd love to be able to uh, chat with you like, encourage you um point you in the right direction if if there's someone who can specifically help you with the decisions you need to make i mean it might be that you're just um can't choose which bank account to get there are there are uh, services for that on, on campus and we'd love to point you in those directions yeah, so Jasmine knows yeah. she just set one up <laughs> yeah, right now it's, trying to figure it out is so hard <laughs> yep it, it is it, and yeah choice is a, is a weird one and uh, especially if not used to it but even if you are used to choice they're new names they're new banks they're new ways of doing things um you might not be used to the automatic systems and getting and if, if you think of learning any technology in a different country in a different language it can get really frustrating very quickly mm -hmm. so that's kind of the flight and and i think jasmine you, you pointed out something that's really important to notice if you feel really tired that's that might actually be quite normal and actually we're mm -hmm. seeing even in covid times people are generally mm -hmm. tired from from all the the new stuff we have to put up with anyway and that's just an extra level of that when you you're doing all your language learning and, and things like that as well so can i, it, can I just add yeah. something i think one of the big things that helped me in that time was to find the little things that i know like mm. to find that the brands of chocolate or other sweets i knew from germany and it, uh, that was a little bit of home um, yep. far away and trying to find those little things I think really helped me through that time of wishing I would be back home and thinking back about that time but knowing that not everything is completely different but there's still things I can mm -hmm. find here and that's a little bit like home here as well. That's that's really helpful yeah and I, I think you do start to get glimpses of that as mm -hmm. you meet people and you might find there's someone from the same country as you on campus that is experiencing the same thing and it uh, yeah, little things like that are, are really helpful strategies for just working through that flight, um, mm -hmm. which moves us quite nicely actually into the next stage, which is fight. And that's when you're uh, potentially frustrated, 
angry. Uh, we, we'd definitely much rather be with family and friends back home. And you just can't seem to get to know people. And and in your answer, Lily, your, yours was probably a bit of the two. And that's kind of what happens. Yeah. You can have these at the same time is that you're no one knows me. No one knows the real me. Um, people are asking how I am and then they move on so quickly that I haven't actually said <laughs> that will happen in England, by the way. We say, how are you as hello? Um, and often that can be a little bit jarring because you want to tell someone how you are. Um, but it doesn't seem like this British person is listening. It, mm. it takes a bit longer to get to that point of actually being able to say, how are you? Um, and we like to talk about the weather first, just, just to let you know. <laughs> so getting used to these ideas of, of how we communicate it is really, again, tough and can be frustrating. Mm. And in a university situation where there's lots of cultures, especially at University of Surrey, it might not just be British cultures that you're trying to figure out. It might be five or six in the same flat uh, trying to work through and all communicating in slightly different ways. Some expressing their emotions very verbally, some are more body language and you're just missing all the cues. So mm -hmm. it don't want to worry you, but that that's potentially why you might feel frustrated mm -hmm. and a little bit angry. And again, it's just, this is normal, allowing you yourselves to process that, find, a, I've got a couple ideas for solutions, but before I, I keep talking, um, guys, what, what do you think? It, uh, Lily, let's go with you first. What, mm -hmm. what do you reckon, um, an experience of this, and you've said a little bit of an experience of it, you've said one solution is to find things you know, yeah. Any other solutions for getting through this bit that's just, or, that, that does can, or can make you angry, can make you embarrassed, yeah. can make you distant? I think um, to a certain degree, you just have to go through it and it gets better. And I think that's really something, it gets easier. It is going to get easier for you as well. Um, the more you get used to things, the easier it gets and it's going to become home for you as well as soon as you make some friends and get to know people a little bit more. I think one thing that really helped me finding a running route and then mm. going for runs, um, that certainly helped my mental health. And I remember some some angry run, runs I had that got quite muddy as well because it was around September, October when I moved to the UK. Um, so that, I think, was one of the big things, finding some, some regular opportunities to exercise um that make me feel more comfortable and where i am as well just trying to find my way around and having that routine in my day really helped me aside from yeah that little bit of home wherever you can find it as well but yeah that was a big one that's great and if if you want to know a little bit more around guildford we do walks so yes. we have got a walk coming up on the 10th uh, <laughs> that was so yeah saturday where, yeah where we're going with more common was my first normal running there route go. there so i can take you on my running route we won't be running don't worry <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah rain or shine we'll, we'll be walking on saturday so do download the friends international app if you'd like to uh, be a yeah. part of that and um, we go out in small groups so we don't we follow the guidelines yeah and um, make sure everyone's safe but also make sure that we get to meet other people and talk and you can share your experiences of these things with us as well uh, Jasmine, do, what what seems to be working at the moment? Uh, I mean, you have been in the UK before for yes. maybe less yeah. uh, length of time, but what have you found has helped you get through that sort of "I can't get through this" <laughs> <laughs> kind of feeling? Totally, yeah. I think well, one of the things like Lily mentioned was finding those foods. I was craving McDonald's for a lot of quarantine, <laughs> even though I don't even get it that much in the US, but it was something familiar. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I also found that journaling for me, writing mm -hmm. down what I'm feeling or things that I'm processing or things that I don't understand can be really helpful because then I'm identifying them and then going and talking to someone I trust, whether it be someone here or someone back home to say that these are some of the things um, and working through it with them um, can be really helpful because that way I feel not only am I processing it, but I'm also feeling seen um, and talking it through with someone else. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, really yeah really good. Uh, sorry, uh, one, sorry. Yeah, carry sorry. on. Yeah. Um. What well, one thing I would add: find your community, mm, where you yeah. find um people that you can connect with, you can talk to. Like Jasmine said, I think that's really important, and not just your friends back home, but actually trying to find a community here. 
Um, hopefully that's your bubble, hopefully that's your student flat, that would be ideal. But if not, try, try keep finding um, that community. We are here to help, we put on events, we connect with you online and offline as well, as long as that is possible. Um, but we are really here to, to connect you with other people, with local people as well as under, other international students. So do um, just make that effort and try to find your community where you fit in, whether that's your faith community or your eth ethnical community, um, or just your, your, your flatmates, as I said as well, um, or your course mates. I think it is really important to find that place where you feel like people actually are listening and can understand you. Yeah. That's so good. Lo mm -hmm. Loads in there. I'm recognizing that we're coming to the end of the, the yeah. time. But um, just just to record, so that the next bit on the transition, just to to show you that. So we've got um, it goes into fit now again. As I, as I said before, this this looks like a curve, but actually it's probably more like a loop, <laughs> uh, and potentially should be thought of as a, a loop around fun, fight, flight, fit. You find something that's fun and you're enjoying, but then you go through some things with people of a different culture, or something's set you off with missing home you find that you fit slightly more because people are listening to you because they know you a little bit more and it you can kind of go into a little bit of a cycle and and again how you process these things might just be you are able to shrug it off that is absolutely we don't want to make too heavy a deal of this but it does affect people in different ways and so where we're talking about anger and embarrassment you might just not relate to that and that's great <laughs> that's amazing if that's the case but also just be aware that sometimes it hits at different stages as well so as, as i said before for me the sort of fight and flight probably happened actually more like in my second year than in my mm -hmm. first um and and so i started having some real pangs of like oh, i miss the climate i miss the people i miss that community that i was part of i miss the different lifestyle this is and and actually it can kind of go in line with the stress of the year so if your work is really tough that can also set off oh, i just wish i wish life back then was so much simpler and that's part of growing up as well uh that's <laughs> kind of what you have to face as well um so just to give you an idea of what it looks like when you fit uh it, it ha fit happens when you are able to resolve your inner conflicts and find your place now that might be in the community. It might be uh, in a sports team. It might be in um, if you like books. <laughs> you suddenly found the books that you like, and a, a couple people to talk to about those books. Um, it might be journaling. There are loads of different mm. ways of handling these, and in some ways, you kind of have to figure out what works for you. Um, you start to feel a bit more confident that you're making a positive contribution, so you have purpose in being here outside of your university work and I, I think that's really important as well some people sink themselves so far into university work they just I'm gonna get this done and then I'm gonna go home mm -hmm. you can do that but I, I'd suggest that's not gonna give you the best experience and actually it's not gonna be the best for you uh, I would really suggest even if it's just coming a walk with us you don't necessarily even have to talk with us but we can show you a little bit more of of life in Guildford outside of just your your degree and and so finding that purpose while you're here making the most of going to guildford when we can we will be doing trips to other places so you can experience a little bit more of the uk and you get to meet other international students that are coming on these trips as well and you start to make connections um and hopefully safely outside of just the bubble that you're in um so hopefully that gives you an idea mm. of the feelings and emotions you might feel as you settle Hopefully it gives you an idea and a flavor of who we are as Friends International and how we might be able to help. Um, and hopefully it's showing we do have a bit of experience in this. So you, if you do find yourselves in this position, please do feel free to share with us. We're part mm. of the chaplaincy on campus. We have we signpost to the Wellbeing Center as well. Um, and we're just here to help. Uh, as much as we can and if you want to meet local people as well well we we have lots of volunteers who <laughs> love interacting with people from different cultures and uh, have loads of cultural experience themselves so you're more you're welcome be welcome in guildford and we, we would love to uh, get to know you more and help you settle in um that kind of closes things off a little bit 
Uh, Lily, is there anything more that you want to say? Yes, I have some few last words. Firstly, if you like cooking, join us for Cooking Collective on Thursday. We're going to make apple crumble, which is a British classic. Um, the ingredients are on our app. So if you haven't downloaded the app, head to your app store, look for Friends International, download it, and then you find out all about our events. Um, we also have the walk coming up that we've mentioned this Saturday at 2 p.m. at Whitmore Common. We're going to meet at Hazel Farm, which is where a lot of other students are living. If you haven't made your way up to Hazel Farm yet, do um, come along. We're going to meet there, and then we're going to walk to Whitmore Common. It's actually the place where I got engaged. So. <laughs> if you want to see why I got engaged, then you Fun should fact. be coming, <laughs> coming yeah. along. Um, and what else? Oh, in two weeks' time, um, we're going to have a few different people joining us for, well, not joining us, but doing it. Let's talk about, we're actually going to be talking about they're going to be talking about computer <laughs> games and other fun things coming up. So it's going to be a very different flavor of let's talk about, but we hope to, well, not see you there, but we hope to see you indirectly there while you're watching us or commenting us as well um i think that's pretty much it for now yeah Probably. there's lots happening always lots happening yes <laughs> but and, check uh, out the app and follow us on social media that's the easiest way to find out and yeah if any of those things that we've just talked about really resonated with you and you'd love to talk a little bit further about that do get in touch with us um we have all the contact details there. Um, we also have drop-in sessions for and I in the Hive. So you can just head to my Surrey, to the Chapmancy team in the Hive, and then book us. Um, and we'd love to chat with you a little bit further about that, if that was helpful. Right, enough said Great. and done. There you go. Um, let's... It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it was lovely to chat with so you guys. Good. Thank you so much for and Jasmine. It was really good, really helpful. And we hope to see the rest of you, hopefully in person really soon on campus. That's it for now. Bye. See Bye. you later.